in the long hadith which came in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim where Jibreel alayhi salam entered one day and in the shape of a man to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he entered in the shape of a man and he sat in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the most mannerable way that a person can sit in front of their teacher and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said none of us knew this man and he didn't look like he had been traveling and none of us knew him so it was amazing what kind of a man was this he had a very dark black beard and hair and he was wearing very white clothing there wasn't a single patch of dirt on it where did this man just pop up from okay they didn't have airplanes in those days they didn't have cars so for someone just pop up like that no one knows him and he doesn't look like he's been traveling and he looks so clean and ready was something peculiar to them Obviously, they didn't know that it was the angel Jibreel alayhi salam until the end of the story. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tell tells him it was the angel Jibreel. Anyway, he sat as a man in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked him many questions about Islam, teaching the companions about Islam. He asked him about the five pillars and the pillars of Iman, what, what a Muslim should believe in, the six pillars. And then he asked them about the pillars of something called Ihsan, which is another level of rising closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to worship Allah as if you can see him. But although you know you cannot see him, you know that he sees you wherever you go. And then he asked him the final question. He said, Mata sa'a? Mata as sa'a? When is this sa'a? When is this hour? When is this time? Meaning the end of the world. When is the world, the universe going to be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And recreated into a different way. When? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied the following words. مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا The person you are asking, بِأَعْلَمَ knows more مِنَ السَّائِلِ than the questioner. In other words, he said, you're asking me? I don't know any more than you. No one knows when the last hour is. No one can claim to know when the last hour is. No one can say, in the year 2000 and such, the last hour is going to happen. Not even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam or even Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel, knew when the last hour is. Allah says in the Quran to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ أَكَادُ أُخْفِيهَا لِتُجْزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا تَسْعَى so he says, the last hour is going to come. It's very soon. It's going to come. Akadu ukhfiha. I am still hiding it away from everyone's knowledge. No one's meant to know when it's going to be. Litujza kullu nafsin bima tasa. I hid it away from people's eyes and knowledge so that people can be rewarded justly for the work they do. So death, we don't know when it's going to happen. And the world's end, we don't know when it's going to happen because otherwise people just leave their good work till the end. They'll murder and cheat and rape and rob and harm and just leave their repentance till the end. But Allah wants us to do our good work justly and wants to reward us with Jannah fairly. Those who really earn it. And there are many other wisdoms. Then Jibreel السلام, asked him, Ma amaratuha? Fama amaratuha. What are its signs then? Are there any signs that tell us it's going to come very close? He said yes. And he gave him two signs among many. And talidu al amatu rabbataha, when you see that the woman gives birth to its master. There are several meanings to this. One is that when you see mothers giving birth to their children, and their children, especially the girls, will grow up to boss their mothers around. Mothers are mentioned here because she's a weaker partner in the family so she begins to boss her and, 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 and they take advantage of her it also means the children in general it also means that the women who used to be slaves in history earlier they will become they will give birth to children who later on in history later on in the future these women will become you know high in society very high and have power and authority in society both meanings are correct, but most scholars say that it means mostly that children will become defiant and, if you like, overpowering against their parents. 
They'll hit them, bash them, defy them, disobey them. They'll overpower them, make them themselves authority over them, throw them in places, you know, become ungrateful to what their parents did. They won't recognize that. And there is a hadith of Prophet which backs this up a little bit, where he says the last hour will come when people will start cursing their own dads. This is a Sahih hadith. People will curse their own dads. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, how can a person curse his own father? He said, well, they will curse, a person will curse another person's father, and so the other person will curse that person's father in, in return. And now that, that didn't usually used to happen in those days. Today, you hear about it, even men curse their own, themselves and their own dads all the time, especially when you know, my parents come from in Lebanon. They always say, Il'an abuk. <laughs> may your dad be cursed. This is a common saying. The mother says it to us every time she gets upset with him, Lila Abuk, curse your dad. The father says to his children, Yilan Abuk, may your dad be cursed. Allahna, Allah billah. You know what Allahna means? That's why the companions they go, Lan, you curse them. The word Lan in Arabic, in Islamic terms here, means that may on the day of judgment, when Allah gives his mercy, may your dad not have any mercy. And you may enter hellfire and God gives him no mercy at all. He's out. With, with, with the shaitans, that's who he's going to be with. Lana is a terrible word. And just a little, just want to mention something here. In Islam, if you curse, say la'an to an object, in the hadith it says if you even curse an object, something that doesn't have ruh in it, the la'ana will return back to the person who said it. Or if you curse someone, la'an to someone who doesn't deserve the la'an, the curse comes back to the person who said it. If it doesn't find, that that person uh, qualifies for this la'na. So you got to be very careful with that word, among other words, including the word kufr to other, other Muslims saying you're a kafir and so on and so forth. Anyway, the other sign the Prophet ﷺ gave him was You will see that the shepherds, Bedouin, Bedouin nomad shepherds, in, in, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there used to be these Bedouins who used, didn't really have homes you know, in a stable place. They had tents out in the, in the deserts. And they used to be barefooted. The poor, uh, destitute Bedouin nomads who are barefooted, sheep herders, they will become rich. That they will, it doesn't say rich here, but that's the meaning. That they will build towers very high in the sky. The Bedouins today, our scholars tell us, refer to places like the Emirates and surrounding places. If you look at Dubai, these people in, you know, a few hundred years back were exactly that, were destitute nomad Arabs, even at the time of the Prophet So their, their offsprings were all, have always been like that. And only in the past few years, they are building the highest, tallest towers in the world. In Dubai, you heard of it? tallest towers in the world on islands this is the hadith of our Prophet which Allah told him about 